Hello Arts 102 and welcome to the Space Unit. I actually kind of unofficially renamed it Depth because I thought it was a little confusing um, calling it space when we have another concept of 2D negative space. Um, but nonetheless, your books, we're going to refer to it as space and um, all the handouts refer to it as space. But what we're talking about is depth. So just so we're clear, this is we're talking about three-dimensional space. Um, so space is the three-dimensional void that elements occupy the empty area between elements. So again, not to be confused with negative space. Um, we're talking about a, a three-dimensional scene here. Of course, the illusion of a three-dimensional scene. Um, we're looking at an, a flat image, obviously, here. Um, an actual three-dimensional object is going to occupy an actual three-dimensional space. Three-dimensional objects have volume and weight. That's um, sort of a pointlessly academic way of saying sculptures have mass and size. <laughs> so, um, But that's part of the space concept. And <clears throat> obviously we can't look at this in person, but this is an image of a three-dimensional object. So there you go. Three-dimensional artwork is an artwork that has depth as well as width and height and is meant to be viewed in the round, for example, sculpture. So this is the bean in Chicago, and the way it's meant to be looked at is you're meant to see it from all angles, so go walk around it and underneath it and um, view it from all angles. So <clears throat> that's a three-dimensional artwork. Depth is um, what we're trying to create the illusion of. Our medium is two-dimensional. We have to create the illusion of depth by comprehending and utilizing the concept of depth. And there's a few uh, there's a few different spaces that we're probably going to be working in for the uh, entirety of the semester. And a lot of what you have probably been doing falls into one of these three spaces. Flat space is a space that has height and width only, um, often the picture plane. So very graphic kind of designs that are typically, um, type, they might be typographical in nature or just have graphic elements, uh, but they're not really a scene or an image in the sense that um, it's, it's not really something that is a natural scene. It's not really something that's, it has any depth to it beyond just the fact that flat things in this image overlap other flat things in this image. <clears throat> so that's flat space. A shallow space, an image has quote unquote some three dimensionality or limited depth. So a little bit more depth than a completely flat space, but not much. That's a shallow space. And deep space is the illusion of great or unlimited depth, for example, landscapes. They're going to have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. So now don't be confused. If we're looking at an image of actual deep space, actually I'll bring one up real quick. Um, what you're going to find is it actually, this is kind of a trick question. Let's see if I can find a good example here. View image. Well, so this is a deep space, outer space image, and basically um, what's happened here is um, there are elements overlapping, but think about this for a minute. Um, you know, how much further away is this portion of the image as opposed to this portion of the image? We don't really know. We have no way to know. Um, we can tell by overlap cues, but nothing else. So, in fact, most images of deep space are actually shallow or even, you might even consider them flat. So that's kind of a trick question. <clears throat> the the word deep space is typically referring to landscapes, but basically it just means that the image has a lot of depth. It has a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. That's what deep space means in our context. So make sure you understand that. 
So, let's talk about how to create the illusion of depth in a two-dimensional medium. There's a few methods that we have um, based on perspective. Um, linear perspective is a mathematical system based on the size, the principle of diminishing size. Um, don't worry, you don't have to know any math. Uh, we're going to just draw out some lines and construct a scene based on this type of uh, system. The objects will be seen as smaller as distance increases through the convergence of receding parallel lines. In linear perspective, all lines converge to one, two, or three vanishing points. And what you're drawing is sort of a virtual camera, in a sense. Um, it enables the designer to position the viewer. So this is a perspective drawing. And it's actually a one-point perspective, and let's talk about Let's talk about that. This is what a one-point perspective drawing is. One-point perspective is drawn or created when the lines describing the elements' depths converge to a single vanishing point. The camera or viewer is parallel to the focal elements of the scene. So here's an, another example of one-point perspective. Also very easy to maintain focal point with one-point perspective because all roads lead to the center in that type of perspective drawing. But as you can see the camera is parallel to the focal elements and all lines describing depth are following back to that single vanishing point. The vanishing point is roughly in the middle of that doorway at the end there, that portal. Two-point perspective is drawn or created when the lines describing the elements depths and widths converge to two separate vanishing points. Basically what's going on there is the camera has rotated. The viewer is no longer parallel. So what we've got here is a little scene where as you can see the uh, one side of the building is converging to the vanishing point on the left and you could easily you could just as easily think of that as the front as anything else so let's call it let's call those lines the depth lines and the other side of the building we'll call those lines the width lines are converging to a vanishing point on the right actually just slightly off the edge of the image there but you can basically see where it is <clears throat> and again the camera has rotated now so the viewer is no longer parallel Three-point perspective is drawn or created when the lines describing the elements, heights, widths, and depths each converge to their own respective vanishing point. The camera has now pitched. The viewer is no longer parallel and is looking either up or down. So here's an example of three-point perspective. Each of these lines are vanishing to their own separate vanishing point. Okay. Aerial perspective. Um, this is when you've created the illusion of deep space, um, distant objects will appear to have less detail and contrast than the objects in the foreground. This is a naturally occurring effect that is caused by particle buildup in the atmosphere over di great distance. Don't be fooled. Aerial perspective has nothing to do with being airborne. A little confusing, but it's just uh, a, it's just an effect of the atmosphere. It also is not a focus thing. The objects that are further away are not necessarily out of focus in aerial perspective. They just have a reduced contrast. As you can see, the pyramids in the back are not blurry they just have a lower contrast than the uh, than the objects in the front. So don't be confused that w with what aerial perspective is and is not. It's particle buildup over great distances and it causes the contrast and detail to reduce. Overlap is a depth cue, um, pretty obvious. Some shapes are in front of and partially hide other shapes. So if we see something overlapping other stuff, we interpret that as being in front of the other shapes. 
pretty straightforward. A shadow, I think we all know what a shadow is, but the darker value on the surface of an object that is away from the source of light or s obscured by another object. So kind of a wordy way of just saying that when light hits an object, it casts a shadow. That really helps with your depth. It really helps the perception of depth when you're making your assignment. If you do a cast shadow, um, it will be it will anchor your objects to the ground and it will read better. A transparency, that's just uh, obviously when objects or shapes in the background can be seen through those positioned in front of them. Um, and translucency is a visual quality in which objects, forms, or planes transmit and diffuse light, but with a greater degree of opacity that does not allow clear visibility through the objects. Examples of translucent objects are things like skin, leaves, um, paper, and things like that. They let the light through, but you can't really see what's, you know, that whatever's behind them is not visible even though they're letting light through. Uh, tilt shift is an illusion that makes things look like miniature toys. It's created by forcing a shallow depth of field over a wide scale image such as a landscape or a cityscape. Uh, keep that in mind when you're keep when you're creating your composites and 3D artwork. Your wide scale imagery should not have a shallow depth of field as it makes it it makes it appear miniature. But of course, the alternative assignment for this unit is to play with perspective. So you might actually want to try this, um, and you'll have to you have to kind of experiment with it. But um, it's an interesting thing to play with, and creates a neat effect on your photography. Especially uh, there's certain shots that it really lends itself to more than others.